Hi there, this is going to be a quick update video on some changes that happened with Linux on the Lenovo Legion Go. So here I have Wagedroid um, on Bazite OS, and Wagedroid has always been available, but previously um, when you use Wagedroid in game mode, you only had single finger touch, so you could only touch one finger, but now there's multi-touch. You could actually zoom and everything. So I'll just start it up and you could take, you could take a look. So now you can see we're here on Android. So I can swipe down and, and swipe up and all the typical Android stuff. Um, there's actually a gesture you could do for to pull up the quick access menu on the right. And on the left, you can pull up regular home. Um, so those gestures are new. Actually, those are new and they're also working. But if we go into settings and we go into about, you can see that this is Android 11. Yep, Android 11. So now if we go back and like, let's say I go into, I don't know, like you do, like, you know, you can see videos working. Hello everyone, my name's Fox. In this video, we're going to talk about the possibilities and things like that. Um, so Android apps are working. And then let me just go into a browser so you can see the zoom. So here I am in browser, you know, um, this is just Firefox, Legion Go Discord, and you see the zoom, zooming is working. And actually, if I go up here and swipe over to a multi-touch test, I can put down my fingers and you can see how many multi-touch points it, it supports. It supports all 10 fingers. So you could do a full 10, 10 point multi-touch, um, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so multi-touch is now working, whereas previously this was a pain point where it didn't work before, where there was only single touch. And because you have Android apps, you could do like, you know, um, you could like, you know, use your apps or whatever and do things, but also um, you could get Google Play. Um, and, but this does require a lot of configuration to get it working into the state. So I will probably uh, post a tutorial for getting Google Play working at some point. So one thing to note about Android on the Legion Go is that this way of running Android, which is called Wagedroid, Wagedroid runs very close to native on Linux. Uh, so because of it, basically you're getting very, you'll get very good performance even at low TDP. So if I go down to like five watts even, you know, I still um, want to like go into a browser and browse around, scroll, zoom, whatever, and like click on things and etc. You could browse around and do things and it'll work fine. Even at five watt TDP, because this is an Android emulation. This is actually running Android very close to native performance. Um, so if I like also went to like YouTube and like, you know, you could just scroll around and do things, whatever, like it, 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 it should be fine. Um, one thing to mention though, is that also you could install ARM emulation on here, which means you could run ARM Android apps on Wagedroid. But that will be more of a um, hit or miss situation. Um, some apps will work, like especially like uh, smartphone games. Sometimes they'll work, sometimes they won't. The performance might not be great. The performance could be okay. It really depends. Um, that one's a little harder to say, but for native Android um, apps that run on x86, which is AMD Intel, um, it runs pretty well. Um, it feels pretty, it's pretty smooth, um, pretty nice. And this basically gives you like a, effectively a tablet mode since I just go back to home and I still have, you know, my regular uh, games and everything, but I can also just go right back in. Oh, right now I'm still on 5 watt TDP, so Steam UI is not good at 5 watt TDP, but Android's good at 5 watt TDP. But anyways, yeah, so let me just up the TDP back to like, I don't know, like let's make it like 12. But yeah. That's really it for Android. Now the next thing to discuss is for HHD, which is the DualSense controller emulator. Um, and this lets you get the back buttons and everything. And I'm pretty sure most people already know about this one, but there's a there's a Decky plugin that lets you uh, modify the the settings and everything for this. So if you want to change from a DualSense to an Xbox button, Xbox controller, or to a regular DualSense, if you don't care for the back buttons, you can actually just use the plugin and change change to that. Um, but however, one thing that people don't know about is that, so I'm in desktop right now, so I'm in nested desktop. And here there's actually a, let me lower the brightness, there you go. Uh, there's a website you could go to, hhd.dev. And what this lets you do is this lets you configure the controller on your desktop as well. Just open a browser, go to hhd.dev, and you will get access to this. So this all runs locally on your machine, so there's nothing being sent online. Um, but basically, um, basically when you, when you land here, you'll get this page where it tells you for a security token and this all stays on the device. This doesn't go anywhere. So this is all local When you hit connect. It'll show you the exact same thing, um, with like your, um, with the ability to, um, change your controller settings, etc. um, on a de regular desktop as well. So you don't need to use the decky plugin if you're on desktop mode. Um, and there's also more options available here that, um, aren't available necessarily in, um, the techie plugin. And also as well, like if you if you want more descriptions, you could click on 
click on these eye icons, the info icons, and you could get more like descriptions on, you know, what are these options? What do they actually do? Like in the Decky plugin, there's not enough room for to fit all these descriptions, but in here you could fit, you could fit them, and, and you could just look and see. But yeah, so there is this desktop option that not many people know about, but it's pretty useful when you want to, um, you know, meddle with some settings that aren't available in the Decky plugin, like the short action, where if you tap, you could do a tap to click. Like right now, I've tap to click enabled on the virtual uh, touchpad. And tap to click is something that HHD supports, but most people probably don't know about it. Anyways, check it out. The next thing I wanted to bring up real quickly is um, there is now um, custom fan curves that are working on BIOS version 29. Um, and a lot of you might already know this, um, but basically now you could change the fan, uh, the fan curves to whatever you want it to be for uh, your device. But just note that if you use the custom fan curve in Simple Decky TDP, you should turn off the Lenovo custom TDP mode because there's a bug right now in the Lenovo BIOS where if you use this and you use um, the fan curve, um, the, TDP, uh, the TDP setting might become more buggy. Um, so basically you want to disable using the Lenovo custom TDP and use instead whatever, um, and this will fall back to an option that does work. So you should just turn this off if you have the fan curve enabled. Um, but yeah, that's really it for um, the Legion Go. Um, there's lots of cool stuff that's been happening, and there's been lots of bug fixes as well. Um, for those that don't know, the 144 hertz bug has been fixed um, on the latest BIOS. Um, the battery indicator seems to be working now. Um, there's been lots of stuff that's been fixed up and um, is now working. So um, you should totally just keep a uh, look at the Legion Go Tricks uh, repo if you want to uh, see the latest status of things. But there's been a lot of fixes and improvements now. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, anyways, that's it for me.